Brothers CEO Dick Fold realized the jig was up and Chapter 11 was the only option. There was only one man for the job. When the U.S. government forced General Motors into bankruptcy, again, he was the guy on speed dial. He's handled some of the biggest busts in corporate history. You could call him the Dean of America's Bankruptcy Bar. He's Harvey Miller, a partner at Weill Gotchel and Mangies. He is here with the inside track on bankruptcy in the post-crisis world. Harvey, Lehman Brothers, General Motors, in a way, these are your babies, right? They've kind of grown up now. I want to know whether you're satisfied with the results. Very satisfied with General Motors and pretty satisfied with Lehman. Lehman continues to go on. Okay, let's start with GM because we are going to get to, to, uh, to Lehman in just a second. Everybody wants to know, looking back at this case, whether in the end it was the right thing for the government to get involved. Because at the time, and I don't need to remind you, all kinds of questions were being raised about the abrogation of contracts, whether the government was railroading the situation. How do you look at it in, in retrospect? I look at it from the perspective that it saved the automobile industry and the automobile supply industry. Without the infusion of government financing and the plan that was worked out, there wouldn't be any automotive industry in this country today. Okay, but from a legal perspective, did it set a dangerous precedent? No, it just used the bankruptcy code for what it's supposed to be used for, rehabilitation and reorganization of an entity. It was faster than usual because you had the government behind it, the, not only the American government, but the Canadian government also. I mean, it was a very important factor in our industrial base. If bankruptcy was good for General Motors, and clearly it was good in the sense that GM, as you point out, might not be here today had the government not got involved and had it not ended up in bankruptcy court, what does that say about Ford? Would Ford's balance sheet have benefited from Chapter 11 treatment the way the GMs did? And Chrysler, well, I should point out. You have to remember, bankruptcy really is the result of illiquidity. Ford had liquidity. They made, it, it made a decision early on to lean up all its assets and had a lot of cash. What precipitated GM was a lack of cash, and that's what the government supplied. Absolutely, but if you look at the two companies, you know, people celebrate Ford for the fact that, that it, it did not go into bankruptcy. And the company has benefited to a certain degree from that. We've heard Alan Mulally talk about uh, the positive influence that Ford's call it toughing it out, has had on sales. But that seems to be wearing off right now. What if a revitalized General Motors is just as competitive as Ford, yet has a cleaner balance sheet? What does that say about the process? And what does that say about the right things that Ford supposedly did? Well, you have to remember, Eric, that when GM went into bankruptcy, and the, the space before bankruptcy was a very dangerous space, the question was, would, would GM ever be able to recapture sales? It turned out that it did, but it was a risk. And I think Ford was bargained against that risk. And you're absolutely right. GM will have a cleaner balance sheet than Ford in the years to come. But that's a bad thing for Ford, isn't it? Well, but if Ford is able to maintain successful sales, it'll take care and service its debt. Let's turn our attention, Harvey, to Lehman Brothers for a moment. Does it have a case against Barclays? And how long is it going to take for Lehman to exit Chapter 11? The thing just drags on forever. Well, I can't speak to the Barclays case because it, because it is sub judice. We're waiting for a decision from the judge. But the current plan is for Chapter 11 to end this year. Do you and we, think we filed a plan of reorganization. And you're confident that that's going to happen? I, there will be a plan confirmed. We hope it's our plan. <laughs> could, if you look back at the Lehman case, could anything have been done better from your perspective to achieve a better result? Absolutely. What? It wasn't necessary to force Lehman into bankruptcy. There could have been an alternative where there was a government-sponsored wind-down plan. Not that Lehman would succeed and be in business, but an orderly wind-down so you would not have had the cataclysmic effect on the market that it had. Do you not believe then Hank Paulson, Tim Geithner, and others who say that that simply wasn't an option at the time? I don't believe it for one minute. It wasn't an option on Monday the 15th. I think Secretary Paulson said, or somebody at the Fed said, they don't have the tools. Well, Tuesday they found $85 billion for AIG. They must have found a screwdriver someplace. Okay, so let's put aside for a moment the question of whether the government did the right thing. Right. Anything you would have done differently? The problem was that Lehman was out of credit. Uh, had no liquidity and no money, and it was a financial institution. It had million, millions of trades pending. Uh, in the context of not being able to save to the market, we're going to fulfill our obligations. The only alternative was liquidation.
Harvey, too big to fail. Federal regulators and politicians have clearly tried to deal with this problem. You need to be thinking about it because what if there's another bank that's going to go under? Do you think we're going to see that happen or is too big to fail off the table? I don't believe that too big to fail is off the table. First place, all, many of the institutions that were in existence on September 15, 2008 are bigger now than they were in 2008. So we have bigger institutions, we have more international institutions. And just take, for example, uh, I'm not predicting anything, but you take a J.P. Morgan Chase. It's bigger now than it's ever been. According to Mr. Diamond, it's going to be very international. Suppose something, I, I don't think it's going to happen, suppose something happened to J.P. Morgan. Do you think that the government would let it go down? I doubt it. So do you and your colleagues at Weill Gottschall sit around, I mean, not sit around, I know you're not sitting on your hands, certainly, but do you actually think about this? Do you think to yourselves, do we need to be prepared for the next big bank failure? We always try to be prepared. How do you prepare? The subject, we talk, as you say, we talk about these things, what's coming in the future. If you read a lot of the commentary around, a lot of the, the financial people are saying, too big to fail is still here, and it will happen again. All right, let's talk about another thing that may be in the future, and this is the prospect of municipal bankruptcy. Would we be better off if Illinois or California, for example, were given the General Motors treatment? Have the federal government, government shepherd them through some kind of a bankruptcy process? Well, right now, there is no possibility of a state being in bankruptcy. There's nothing in the bankruptcy law that would allow that. There is a movement on to amend the bankruptcy law to create a Chapter 8 for states. But think about it. If 20 of the states of the United States are in bankruptcy, what happens to the credit of the United States? No, it's an excellent question. That's why I want you to talk me through it, talk us through it. Why is it a bad idea? Well, first place, you have the 10th Amendment to the Constitution. The 10th Amendment to the Constitution says the federal government can't interfere with the political and operational aspects of a state. So you can't impose an, a budget, for example, on a state. So the only effect of going into bankruptcy, at least at this, at this point in time, would be whether you could reject union contracts, terminate the pensions, or do something with the pensions. Those are both politically very sensitive. Okay, but from a mechanical standpoint, would it work? Good lawyers could draft a petition in bankruptcy. What happens after that is a big problem. In the 30s, when cities, municipalities were in, in bankruptcy, some, some, the city of Asbury Park, I think, was in bankruptcy for 35 years. You okay, don't want so, to see that. No, but, but as you point out, it could work. So I want to get your position on it clearly. Do you think it is a potential solution or just no matter how you slice it, a bad idea? It's an option. And when you get desperate, you move to those options. The city of, of Vallejo in California has been in, in Chapter 9 for over a year. But Harrisburg is resisting. Jefferson County, Alabama is resisting. So it's, it's a really the last resort. Harvey, I want to turn your attention to another item in the news that bears some relationship or similarity, let's say, to what goes on in bankruptcy cases. And this is the Madoff case. The trustee, Irving Picard, is playing a role not unlike that of a trustee in a bankruptcy case. Is he doing a good job? He seems to be recovering a whole lot of money. I think Irving has been very successful. He's been very, very aggressive. He's pushing the envelope to the limits. Uh, he's but should he be pushing the envelope to the limits? Should he be saying, for example, J.P. Morgan, you owe me $6.4 billion. Fred Wilpon and company and the Mets, you owe me a billion dollars? Well, he, let's take Wilpon first. There's, the, the allegation is that Wilpon and Madoff are essentially were partners. That's a fairly good app, a, allocation of uh, resources because there's a big recovery there. The J.P. Morgan Chase is a very aggressive lawsuit. Uh, I think he's striking out and trying to make new law. Now, is that ultimately going to be detrimental to the beneficiaries, let's say, of uh, the Madoff case? If he's successful, it will be very beneficial to them. It may, it may create another duty on the part of financial institutions, make them sort of semi-regulators. Harvey, we have about 30 seconds to go, so just one last question. What are you watching right now? What's important to keep an eye on in the world of bankruptcy? The, uh, you know, the two main drivers for human beings, greed and fear. I'm not going to talk about sex. Uh, the, the greed aspect is beginning to take over. There is no institutional memory, Eric. People have forgotten what happened in 2008. Credit is opening up, risk analysis is being pushed to the side, and the drive is the profits, return on the capital. If you look at the uh, private equity firms, they're now taking their portfolio companies public. This is exactly what happened before.
So it's going to be an interesting three to five years. Harvey, thanks as always Thank for joining you. us. Harvey Thank Miller you. of Wild Gotchel and Manges with a warning. If you don't pay attention to history, it's doomed to repeat itself.